let's go to the book of Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter Okay, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 7, it says this. It says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost says, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the day, as in the provocation, in the day of temptation in the wilderness, where your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Now, we are, for those that's just tuning, are we live yet? <coughs> mm. Throat got dry. For those that just tuning in, um, we're teaching on how to be used by the Holy Spirit. Um, there's a difference when a person is being used by the Holy Ghost versus when a person is being used, all right? And I'm going to show you a good example here. Now, I want you to hold your hand there and go to the book of Acts, chapter 1. Verse 24. I'm going to cut that air down so I'm going to live dry in here. Some of y'all are just going to have to. I'm working anyway. <laughs> Whoever's back there, they probably sitting down. <laughs> Whoever it is, probably sitting down back there. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Um, as we said earlier, the body of Christ, when you look at the body of Christ, even including here, the body of Christ is not walking in the power of God like the Lord have available for them. And many of them, the worst thing you can do is lie on the Holy Ghost. The greatest thing you can do is obey the Holy Ghost. But when the Holy Spirit is directing you, there's going to be a confirmation. And it's going to be with power. And it's going to be the truth. If you do something and it doesn't line up with the word or it's not the truth, the Holy Spirit didn't lead you to do this. You did it on your own. That's what that's, a lot of people do things on their own. Um, but the scripture tells us that the Holy Ghost will lead us and guide us in all truth. All right. Now, in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 24, it says this. And they prayed and said, Thy Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of the ministry and apostleship from which Judas, by transgression, failed, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lot, and the lot fell upon Matthew, Matthew. And he was numbered with the eleven. Now, this is the time when Jesus told the disciples to go in the upper room and wait until they are endured with power from on high. But what happened was Peter took it upon himself. Now, the Holy Spirit didn't guide, he did not lead Peter to do this. Peter took upon himself, because Peter was that type of person, he took it upon himself to try to replace Judas. And that's why 
after this happened, you don't hear anything else about Matthew. They picked him, but God didn't. And a lot of folks think that Matthew was the 12, but he was not. He was not a two. He, Matthew was not an apostle. Peter took it upon himself to do it because he was not guided by the Holy Spirit. Jesus had told Peter, gave Peter specific instructions what to do. And what he told Peter to do is this. I want you to stay in the upper room until you are endured with power from on high. That's what Jesus, that's the last instructions he left them. But what Peter did, being the person he was, Peter decided to do something different. All right? Now, um, trust the Lord, I want everybody in here. Everybody. I don't want nobody out there because all you need to hear is everybody. You need to be in here sitting down so you can get this word. Is anybody, anybody else left out there? Is anybody out there? This word too important. Because you're going to find out that without the word, the Holy Spirit ain't going to use you. And that's the problem. That, that is the problem. Without the word, the Holy Spirit will not use people. He will not. Is, it, is anybody else out there? Okay, you know we started Bible study at six thirty, right? Okay, well I know some of y'all work, but then some of y'all don't work. All right. Okay. Now, um, because of that, is that everybody? There's nobody out there outside at that door before we get started. Everybody means everybody, right? It means nobody is exempt. Okay, okay. I'm talking about this here. Uh, I don't want nobody to stand up there. Now, okay. The Holy Spirit, <clears throat> Jesus sent the Holy Spirit here to help us. But a lot of people do not understand the importance of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they don't, they think that the Holy Spirit is here to do something on Sundays and Wednesdays. That's the, that's the thought in the church realm. All right? That's the purpose. But that's not true. The Holy Spirit is here to work with us each and every day. All right? Now, in what Peter did, Peter, Jesus told Peter, stay in the upper room until you endure with power. So Peter decided to take up on himself and try to replace Judas. And it did not work. And that's what you do. When you follow, when you follow your own thought or your own idea, it's not going to work. The Lord is not going to confirm his word because of what you do or what you think. He's going to confirm his word because it is his word, all right? Now, I want you to go to the book of Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And that's why it's so important to ask the Lord to help you in knowing that you're going to obey the Holy Spirit. In the book of Acts chapter 4, verse 29, it says this, Acts 4, verse 29, it says, And now, Lord, behold their threatening, and grant unto thy servant that which that with all boldness they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Lord of the holy child Jesus and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness now, you have two different incidents. You have one incident where the Holy Spirit did not confirm that Peter, what Peter did was what Jesus wanted him to do. And then you have another incident where they prayed and they asked the Holy, Peter again. Peter not learning now, okay? They prayed and asked the Lord, after being persecuted, they asked the Lord once again to grant them signs and wonders so that Jesus can be glorified. That's, and then the Bible
Bible says that the place was shaken and all of them was filled with what? Holy Ghost, and they spake boldly. So you have two dis you have two different incidents by as we know at least one of the same persons involved in it, and that's Peter. And the difference is this the Holy Spirit will confirm what he wants to confirm. Not confirm what we want to confirm. If we if we decide to make up our program, the Holy Spirit don't have to be involved in it. See, my Bible tells me that Jesus said the Holy Spirit is going to lead and guide you in all truth. Matter of fact, let's go to that scripture. Let's go to um, St. John. Let's go to St. John right quick. And look at this scripture in St. John. And see what it, what, what it says. St. John chapter 16, verse 13 says this. It says, St. John, verse 13, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth. Now notice it, he says guide. He didn't say we were going to lead the Holy Ghost. And a lot of people, the church world is so mixed up and so messed up that they say, this is what they say, I'm going to take the Holy Spirit with me. You ain't taking the Holy Spirit nowhere you don't want to go. That, that, that's, that, that shows the ignorance of folk. I don't care whether you 15, 10, or 140 years old. What that does to the devil, that shows your ignorance. To the devil, the spirit we fighting against, that shows the devil you don't know the word. You don't know what you're saying. So you're in a place where you ignorant, so the devil will take advantage of you because you don't know the scripture. So nobody is going to lead and guide the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the scripture says the Holy Spirit was sent you to lead and guide us. I don't care whether you're apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. I don't care whether you call yourself a saint. You can call yourself the Pope. The, you ain't, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will not let you guide him. The Holy Spirit has sent you to guide us. And it's amazing, and the reason why people follow people like that, because they don't believe the word. They don't study the word for themselves. So when you don't study the word, and you fall in someone that really don't know the word, that means you are ignorant, and you, you'll be thinking, well, they doing a leading you right, and they leading you wrong, but you don't know because you won't study the word. And that's why it's so important for everybody to study the word, to make sure that what you're receiving and what you're doing is the truth and make sure that you don't walk in a place of ignorance. Let me say this to you. When you're ignorant, when you're ignorant, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not use you when you're ignorant. And the devil will take advantage of you when you are ignorant. And that's what a lot of people are doing. So Jesus said, I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit here. He's gonna lead and guide you into all truth. So that means the Holy Spirit came here on the day of Pentecost. And he started helping the church because Jesus said, I'm going to send you a helper. So how can I, how can I get this stuff? How can I actually begin to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? Obey the word. The Bible says the Holy Spirit was sent you so we can obey him. All right? So as a Christian, when you give your life to the Lord, then you should understand that Jesus Christ, the Bible says this about Jesus. He, he dwells in our hearts by faith. He's in heaven on the right hand of the Father. The Holy Spirit is here on the earth. If you're a Christian and you don't believe the Holy Spirit is here on the earth, that means you don't believe what Jesus said. And Jesus said the reason why worldly people don't believe this is because they can't see him. And when you can't see the Holy Ghost and you don't believe he's here because you can't see him, it's because you are an unbeliever. The Bible, Jesus categorized you as the world. So if you're in the world, that means you're unsaved. That's what it means. Now, St. John 14, verse 7, verse 16 and 17. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may, which means help him, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be 
in you. Now notice in verse 17, he says, even the Holy Spirit, whom the world cannot receive him. The world, why? The world can't accept the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they can't see him. They can't see him. So if you, you base your, your relationship with the Lord by your sight, that means that the Holy Spirit can't use you. But how do, well, how do we get the Holy Spirit? First of all, you got to be saved. That's the first thing. Because Jesus sent the Holy Spirit here to help save folk. People that are not unsaved, but saved. All right? Now, I want you to hold your hand there. And let's go to Acts 5 right quick. Acts chapter 5. The Holy Spirit is given to help those that are saved. And there's a reason why. In Acts 5, verse 32, it says this. It says, and we are his witnesses of these things. Somebody there, witness of Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, what Jesus went through. And then it says, and so is also the Holy Ghost, whom God has given to them that, what? That obey him. That obey him. Those that's going to obey the Holy Spirit, then the Lord Jesus will allow us to receive the Holy Spirit. Those of you that do not obey the Holy Spirit, you do not have the Holy Spirit. I don't care how long you've been saying you're working in the church or ministry or whatever, you do not have the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is given to those that obey. And then if you don't believe his words, you should sure have it. <laughs> if you don't believe what I just read, that's in your Bible. Oh, that's right then. That's in your Bible. The Holy Spirit is given to those that's going to obey. So the Holy Spirit is sent here to help Christians, help those that believe in Jesus Christ. And because of that, because of that, we can receive help from him. Any questions? So the difference in Acts chapter 4, where the Holy Spirit filled them versus Peter, was in Acts chapter 4, they obeyed the word. They, instead of complaining about being persecuted, they prayed and thanked the Lord and asked the Lord for more power to what? Do more work. To do more work. To do more. Now keep that in mind, to do more work. The Holy Spirit, the Lord ain't going to give you the Holy Spirit to show off. You ain't going to get the Holy Spirit to show off. That's not the purpose. The Lord, listen, the Lord ain't going to give you the Holy Spirit to go on Fox or CNN or some other, or Oprah or whoever show, just to show off. You know the purpose of the Holy Spirit to minister the gospel, to help us minister Jesus. That's the purpose. When you see all these preachers on TV and they um, work with these worldly folks, and the Lord, just because they're on their people, the Lord ain't telling them to do that. If the Lord told them, you know what they'll do? Preach the gospel. They'll tell the truth. Everywhere Jesus went, he preached the word. And the Bible said Jesus was endowed with the Holy Spirit when he, after he got baptized. The Holy Spirit came upon him like a dove. What he did? He preached. He went to work. He went to work. He, didn't, he, he, he went to work, folks. And, a lot, and because people won't study the word and believe everything that some man or woman say and won't search behind it, a lot of them going to hell. Why? Because Jesus said in Matthew 15 that when you follow a blind leader, you going into the ditch too, meaning you going to hell right with that blind leader. Because he done told all of us to study, all right? Not just us preachers, but all of you need to study. You need to study to make sure that we're telling you the truth. You need to study to make sure we're giving you the right thing, the word, all right? Any question before we move on? Okay, so if you if you want the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us you can ask for him. And the God, Christ, will allow him to guide you as long as you're going to obey him. Now, that's where the problem can come in at, all right? Okay, now, let's go back to chapter 16. Then we're going to move on. Chapter 16, <clears throat> verse 13. It says, How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Now, this is talking about the characteristic of what the Holy Spirit is going to do. Well, okay, wait a minute. Okay, it says he 
he's going to guide us in the all truth. It didn't say he was going to lead us into our program. People, okay, the Holy Ghost was sent here to help people, empower people, to glorify and talk about Jesus. Now, I know some of you are going to get mad, especially those of you on air. You're going to get mad at what I'm going to say. The Holy Spirit, do, 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 Jesus did not send the Holy Spirit here for us to preach our anniversary. That's man's thing. I want you to understand. The Holy Spirit came here, and the Bible tells us why he came. And nowhere in there you see preaching somebody's anniversary. Okay, you can't put the Holy Ghost on program. If you put him on program, that means you guiding him. Do you understand that? And when I hear that mess, I don't care. I don't care whether it's coming from TDJs, the uh, whoever. I know that's a lie. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will not allow us to guide him. He should have guided us. Kenneth Copeland. Uh, I, folks, listen to me closely. The reason why people follow a lot of preachers because they're too lazy to study for themselves. They won't study the word and they'll believe everything come out of our mouth and won't check behind it. And the Lord told you to check. Why? Because there's going to be some false preachers. Oh, everybody preaching and teaching ain't telling the whole truth. So if you tell the whole truth, you're going to show it in the word. And that's why we don't have that mess here. Why? Because I'm down here for one reason. To glorify Jesus. To magnify him. To lift him up. If I have an anniversary, I want him to give it to me. I want, you know what? I want my anniversary to be this. Well done. Thy good and faithful servant. That's what I want. That's, I want to have my anniversary in heaven. Not here on the earth. I don't care about no anniversary. You know what? Matter of fact, I don't, I don't even feel worthy. To, you know what? I didn't hang on a cross. He did. I did not hang on a cross. He did. And I was sent to preach and teach him. I thank the Lord he opened my eyes. I thank the Lord I'm saved. I thank the Lord I don't believe everybody. But I thank the Lord I believe his word. I believe this word. So the Bible says this. How be it when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself. But wait a minute. <laughs> Did y'all? He will not speak of him. The Holy Spirit ain't going to talk about himself. He going to talk about Jesus. That's what my Bible tells me. It says he will not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. So the Bible is telling every Christian, not just the preacher, but every Christian that's born again, the Holy Spirit want to guide you. He wants to minister to you and through you. He want to help you. But if you act like he ain't here, then what can he do? If you wake up like a dummy every day, and you act like he ain't here, ain't nothing he can do. Why? Because you're a non-believer. If you, okay, if you believe he's here, you're going to act like he's here. And that's why Jesus said in the book of Ephesians 4.30, do not grieve him. Why? Because, see, the Holy Spirit, when you grieve him, he back off of you. When, you. when you don't obey him, he back off. That's what he does. But his job here is to help us. It's, it just, he will lead and guide you in all truth, and whatsoever, whatsoever he shall hear, whatsoever the Lord tell him, he going to tell us. So that means the Holy Spirit will talk to you. Go to Acts chapter 10. The Holy Spirit will actually talk to you. Acts chapter 10. Acts 
Acts chapter 10, okay? Okay, in the book of Acts 10, verse 18, it says, And called and asked whether Simon, whose surname Peter, was lodged there. This group of men that came from Cornelius, the, Holy, the angel had Cornelius to go and send some men down to have Peter to come and preach the gospel to them, all right? So now they've gotten to where Peter was, and now they're asking for Simon Peter which is their name, Peter, who lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, who spoke to him? The Spirit said, the Holy Ghost said to him, what? Well, how he know the Holy Spirit? Said something to him. He, he what? He heard it. He heard it. So the Holy Spirit instructed him, told him to go down, and he told him where to go at, and he told him who was there. So let me ask you a question. When he went down, were he there? Jesus. And every Christian, every born-again believer, should have a relationship with the Holy Ghost. Especially in this world, because we need his help. Not just the pre all of you. Every, every Christian needs to learn how to receive from the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit was sent here to help us to do exactly what Jesus wanted us to do. Now, I want you to go to Matthew. Let's go to Matthew. Let me say this to you. In the book of Matthew, chapter 3, everybody got it? I want you to look at verse 11. It says this. It says, I indeed baptize you with water, this is John the Baptist, unto repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with what? And now, who was John the Baptist talking about? Okay, stop right there for a minute. Listen to me closely. If you, if you go to a place, and there are 10,000 people in that place, and they are claiming that they are being guided by the Holy Spirit, and do not believe in Jesus, they lie. They're absolute. You know why? Jesus is the only one that has the right and the authority to tell the Holy Spirit who to minister to. That's what that scripture means. John said, the only thing I can do is baptize you with water. But Jesus is the one that gives the Holy Spirit the authority who to minister to. Do you understand that? So wait a minute. If you're not, if you don't believe in Jesus, how are you going to? I, 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 don't, I don't care if you've been saved for 50, 11 years. That's why when I hear people, these other occults and stuff, and they talk about different things, and they don't believe in Jesus, I know the Holy Spirit ain't guiding them. He can't. Why? Because it's Jesus that gives the Holy Spirit instruction, not us. You can weep and moan all you want, but if you don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, and you're not a Christian, the Holy Spirit ain't gonna, the Holy Spirit ain't gonna use you. I don't care what oh, they were so anointed. How you know? What you know about the anointing? When, when who gave you the authority to say who's anointed? Because everybody's saying they're anointed now. Oh, they were so anointed. But by who? Because the devil will anoint you too. The, the Bible says he, he got ministers that have transformed themselves to be preachers. So wait, how 
you know, if you don't study how you know, you don't know. And that's why when people tell me they're anointed, how you know you anointed? Or who you know, who anointed you? You might be, but by who? The devil anointed Judas to betray Jesus. He sure did. He empowered Judas to betray Jesus. All right? Any question before we move? So that's why it's so important to understand that if Jesus is not in this place or in whatever you're doing, believe me, the Holy Spirit ain't in it either. And the purpose of the Holy Spirit, the Lord don't want you to run away from him. He, the Lord wants you to get to know him. Well, how are you going to get to know him? Through the word. One thing is this. Holy Spirit ain't going to tell no lie. You just started getting to know. He ain't gonna lie. So if you hear somebody coming over the airway saying God said this or God said that or, and it goes against his word, you know good with the Holy Spirit. Isn't it? God told me to tell you. Wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. What God told you to tell me? It's a whole lot of this God told me to tell you. But the point about it, which God? There's two God. There's one with the capital G. God our Father, there's one with the small g, the God of this world. So which one of them told you? Which, 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 it's like, man, that's why, that's why Christians need to be guided by the spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, is not going to tell you anything out of or against this word. He just, the Holy Spirit just don't do that. Any question? And let me tell you something, when something comes to you, whether it's a dream or a vision, if it's against the word, the Holy Spirit ain't had nothing to do with it. All right? The purpose of the Holy Spirit is to utilize the word and do exactly what Jesus told them to do. So here we see where the Holy Spirit actually gave Peter instructions and said, Behold, three men seek thee. Three men. And when he went down, it wasn't four. It wasn't two. It was three. It was, let me say, that's why, you know what, a uh, brother was telling us today that uh, I, another minister came by here and saw our sign here that said, um, and said the guy go to what, Bible Way on, on Tobacco Road and said the guy liked what our sign said. Why? It tells the truth. Jesus didn't die on Friday. How in the world could Jesus die on a Friday and raise on a Sunday and it was three days and three nights? How you going to get... People, I don't, your mom vacation ain't, people, you can get, you can, you can apply trigonomics, physics, calculus, add, subtraction, divide, and multiplication. You can't come up with that. From Friday to Sunday, it's three old days, three old nights. But look at all these ministries around here saying we're going to celebrate Good Friday. When you become a Christian, all days are good. When you're born again. But what you don't do, you don't follow lies and tradition. Because the Bible, Jesus said this in the book of Matthew 15. He said tradition make void the word of God. Meaning this, when you accept tradition over the truth, the word ain't going to work in your life. It's going to work in somebody else, but not Job. It's the, you can't take the power from the word. If you, don't, if you refuse the word, that means you ain't got no power. But the word is still powerful. Why? Because in the book of Hebrews 4.12, it said the word, the word, not us, but the word is quick and powerful. We weak, ignorant, and dumb without the word. I don't care how much education you got. You just an educated, dumb Christian. Lack of a Christian. Why? Because you don't know the word. And see, okay, the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you in all truth. What is truth? Okay, the truth is this. Jesus died on a Wednesday, and he rose on sometime between Saturday evening and early Sunday morning. How you know? Count the days. Count the days. You're going to get three whole days out of it, and sometime early before day, Sunday morning, Jesus rose. But these folks still in lies. And you know what? They don't want to change. You know what? When you're bound by the devil, you can't change. When you're bound by the devil, people can tell you the truth, and you think, I can't change. Why? Because you're bound by the, the Holy Spirit leading and guides you in all truth. So if you want the Holy Spirit to guide you, you're going to have to be willing to be truthful. 
If you, if you don't want to be truthful, the Holy Spirit ain't going to use you. He cannot use you. And the truth is this. Jesus is the one that sanctions the Holy Spirit to work in any of us. If Jesus do not approve of it, he will not, I didn't say it, he will not work in us. All right? He will not, any question before we move on. Now, let's go to the book of, uh, let's go to the book of Romans, chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, talking about the Holy Spirit. Learning how to allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in the all truth. And, Je okay, notice, Jesus did not say that he was going to guide us in the all truth. We know he will. He said the Holy Ghost. But okay, listen, okay, stop for a minute. Okay, who's the Savior? Okay, God sent Jesus. All right? To save. So God ain't saving nobody. Why? Because he knows Jesus was sufficient enough to save. Can y'all, do y'all believe that? So God didn't come behind Jesus and say, well, you know, you, you didn't save that person. You, no, God knew he was enough to save everybody. All right. So Jesus decided to send the Holy Ghost. Why? To do what? Lead and guide us in all truth. So Jesus ain't going to come and tell the Holy Spirit, well, you missed that, you missed. No, Jesus knew the Holy Spirit can do it. So I want you to understand this. Who's guiding us here on earth today? Holy Spirit, and he's representing. Thank you. Thank you, all right? He's representing Jesus the Christ, all right? Now, in the book of Romans, <clears throat> Romans chapter 8, Lord Jesus, whoo, Jesus. He says this in verse 26. Likewise, the Spirit also helps our okay wait a minute notice it said the spirit also helps our infirmities the Holy Ghost will help our weaknesses that's the purpose he, he's here to help us but if you don't receive from him how you gonna you're gonna be trying to walk this walk by yourself and you cannot you're gonna be defeated every day by the devil he says, likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. For we know not what we should pray for as we are. He just told us we don't even know how to pray. We don't know. That means we're ignorant. Okay, so, the, okay, we'll start praying for one thing. Oh, I need to pray for, I need, and the Lord said, you need to pray for something else. You know, you be, Lord, Lord, I need a car, I need a car, I need a car. Lord said, you need a job. Lord, I need a car. I need a car. I saw a car. Won't Lord Jesus? I'm going to put it on the refrigerator. I'm going to put it up on the refrigerator. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray, Lord. I'm going to get that car. And the Holy Spirit will wait till you stop running your mouth and say, you ever thought about getting a job? But you don't want to hear that. Why? Because that means you got to work. That's, that's the people believe what they want to believe but they won't believe the truth. But the thing about it, remember this, you can believe what you want to believe, but it ain't going to work if it's not the truth. It's not the truth. So it says, it says this, Likewise, the Spirit also help our infirmities, for he know not what we should, for we know not what we should pray for as we are, but the Spirit should be himself make intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered. Let me tell you this now. Jesus makes intercession for us in heaven. The Holy Spirit makes intercession for us on earth. Now, right now, Jesus is in heaven, interceding for the body of Christ, the real Christian. But the Holy Spirit was sent here to help us, to intercede for us. That's, that's our helper for us, all right? And long as we walking in the name and on the power of Je the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit will help us, all right? Now notice he said this, he said, but the Spirit makes intercession for us with groaning which cannot be uttered, okay? He and he that searches the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now Jesus makes intercession for us, all right? Okay, he knows everything. He knows what's in us. He knows Jesus knows everything. Okay, let me say, I'm going to use this term right now. 
if we said that the Holy Spirit had a boss, it would be Jesus. Because Jesus had the right to tell him what to do. Who you think sent him here? He said, I'm going to send you a confidence. And that comforter is going to comfort you. He's going to lead and guide you in all truth. And not only that, but he's going to teach you all things. He, the, who, the Holy Spirit. But if you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, who's teaching you? I don't care how many seminary. You could have went to every seminary on the earth and graduated. Come laude or whatever you call it. And still don't know anything about the Bible. Why? Because you're not anointed. You're not anointed. You know, a lot of people get lost in that stuff. But you know what? Every time I go to Ephesians chapter 4, I still find out that Jesus gave apostles, prophets, or let me say it this way, that Jesus anointed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to minister to the body. Wait a minute. Let me. Jesus is the one that calls and anoints people to preach the gospel. Not y'all seminaries. That's why the church is so messed up today because a lot of folk went to seminary and they're not filled with the Holy Ghost. Why? Because see, the Holy Ghost will guide you in the what? Oh, so that means if you are an anointed preacher, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or whatever in the body of Christ, you're going to always tell the why? Because you are anointed, but if you're a worldly preacher, you're going to preach sermons, and you're going to preach what people want to hear, and you're going to make people dumber and dumber, and you're going to make them vulnerable to the devil, because the devil going to wear them out. Why? Because it's the only thing that can feed the devil is the word. Why do you think Ephesians chapter 6 said the word is the sword of the spirit? Why do you think Ephesians chapter 6 said the word is the shield of faith? Why do you think that the Bible said your feet is shunned with the gospel, and the gospel is what? The word. But when you ain't telling the when, when you feeding people lies and poison, like Jesus talked about the Pharisees, you're going to kill them. And the devil going to wear them out. Why? Because you lying to them. When any, I don't care who you are, when you're being guided by the Holy Spirit, you're going to tell the whole truth. You ain't going to you, you're not going to hook up with tradition. You're not going to hook up a lie. You're not going to tell a half true and a part lie. Uh, the Holy Spirit will guide you to tell the whole truth from beginning to the end. If that, if, if you ain't doing that, he ain't guiding you, and that's all to it. Any question before we move on? And that, that excludes a whole lot of these preachers because you know what they do? They get on there and hold back the truth and won't tell people. And then the congregation is malnutrition. They weak. The devil do whatever he want to do to them. Why? Because they don't know how to use the word to defeat the devil. So what? They walk around helpless, no power, no authority, no nothing. And the devil run rampant over them. Why? Because they they're not being fed. Jesus told us to feed the sheep. Oh, man. Or uh, any question before we move on. Talking about the Holy Spirit. Now listen, it says, we know, he says this. He helps our infirmity, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit himself make intercession for us with groanings which cannot be heard. All right? It's, verse 27 talks about how he searches, he, he that searches out, talking about Jesus, he know what is the mind of the Spirit, and he know what, uh, not, he know What's in our heart? Not only that, he made intercession for the saints. Go to Hebrews chapter 7. Jesus made intercession for us in heaven. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us here on the earth, all right? Hebrews chapter 7. Lord Jesus, thank the Lord for his word. Thank the Lord for his word. I thank the Lord for his word. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25 says this. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make what? Now this is talking about Jesus. So Jesus is in heaven 
interceding for the true Christian. The Holy Spirit is on the earth interceding for us down here, helping us down here. Any questions? All right, now, understanding this, I want you to go to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. First Corinthians.
religion back then, when he walked there, the Pharisees, the Heronians, the Sadducees, that's what they had a problem with. Matter of fact, the high priest says he make himself God. And he was the son of God. But the spirit of Christ was in him. All right. So if you believe, oh, I believe in Jesus. Well, I believe Jesus walked the earth. Well, I know Muhammad walked the earth. I know Joseph Smith walked the earth. I didn't see him, but I read about him. Because I know where they started. A cult. No. You got to believe more than that. You got to believe that Jesus is the Christ. Now, wait a minute. That's where the world and the devil have a problem with it. Because when you're saying Jesus was the Christ, and you understand what is being said, you're saying that when God said back in Genesis, let us make man, he was talking to Christ, his son. Now, wait a minute. What do you mean Christ's son? Okay, God is a spirit. Christ is a spirit. When God said, let us make man, he was not talking to Michael and Gabriel, the angels. He was talking to his son when he said, let us make man. So that means you're going to have to come to a place of understanding where Jesus told the Pharisees, if you can't understand this, you can't go to heaven. Now, what did Jesus tell the Pharisees? Hold your hand down. I want you to go to St. John. Let's go to St. John chapter 8. You, and that's where a lot of people are missing. They talk about Jesus, but they really don't understand who Jesus really was. All right, St. John chapter 8. <clears throat> Verse 23 and 24. Listen to what he said. Jesus said this now. He said, now he's talking to religious leaders of that day. He said, you're from beneath. In other words, you of the earth. But then he said, I'm from above. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, this is Jesus. They, they looking at Jesus. All they see is Jesus, a human being. And Jesus, this human being is telling them, you from beneath, but I'm from above. He wasn't talking about he's from the mountain. So, wait a minute, wait a minute. How could Jesus be from above. Jesus was making a clear distinction between him and them. He said, I'm from above, you from beneath. And then he went on and said to really mess them up. <laughs> you are, but I am not. So wait a minute. What you mean I am not of this world? Wait a minute. What you mean we are we know we are of this world. We were born into this world. But you saying you are not. So what are you? Where you come from? And the reason why they couldn't understand this, because they were looking at just Jesus. They did not understand that every born again, every person, period, whether you're born again or not, you have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Your spirit and soul makes up the inner man. But it is a spirit. Jesus, the spirit of Christ came into the body of Jesus. God created a body for Jesus, for Christ. Do you understand that? God, the Bible tells us in Hebrews, y'all tell me, yeah, where's that at? Where's it at? Go ahead, Pam. Why? Because you got it on the screen. 
All right, put it over there. Put it up there. Listen to this. Hebrew, put it on, put it on the screen right quick. Hebrews 10 and 5. Wherefore he cometh into the world, he says, Sacrifice and offering thou would not. But a body, God prepared a body for Jesus, for Christ. Now, okay, in the beginning, they prepared a body for Adam. But the Bible says God blew breath into Adam. But the body of Christ, the body that God prepared on the earth here was called Jesus. And Christ, God's son, left his authority in heaven, gave up all his power, Christ did, to dwell in the body of Jesus. So now you got a spirit that's in Jesus, and that spirit's name is Christ. There's no different from you and I. Because you got a spirit that's dwelling in you. And if your spirit leave your body, your body ain't going to operate in this earth. All right. So what God did, God prepared a body. Christ came down, gave up his throne in glory, and dwelled in the body of Jesus. So G Jesus did not lie when he said, I'm from up there. And folk been going to church 30 and 40 years, don't understand that. I'm, oh, I'm from heaven. I was, I'm, what? The Pharisees had a problem with Jesus saying that he was God's son. That's the main reason why they killed him, because he called himself God. Now listen to what he said here in St. John chapter 8. He said this, he said, I'm not of this world. Then he said, therefore unto you. You shall die in your sin if you believe not that I am. Well, they know he was Jesus because they said, we, we, we see you grew up. You, you the carpenter's son. We know your family. They knew that. But they refused to believe that Christ, God's son, was inside of Jesus. That's why Christ means the anointed one. Folks, let me tell you something. Christ, when God was lead, when the Father was leading Israel out of Egypt, who you think was right there watching? Why you think the Bible said he still, he formed a, a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day? Why you think Jesus says stuff like, I always do those things I see my father do? Why you think Jesus made a statement saying, I saw when God kicked Satan out of heaven? You, okay, when, that's why he was telling, listen, that's why he used to tell the religious world back then. I say therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins if you believe not that I am he. You shall die in your sins. So just believing Jesus is Jesus. No, he's saying, no, because you see me. You, you see me. You, I'm, you, you, you know my name is Jesus. But what you're going to have to believe is that I'm the Christ. I'm God's Original son. We were adopted. We were adopted children. Christ is God's original son. And that's why many times you read a scripture like Christ Jesus, the anointed one, or Jesus the Christ, all right? So if you don't believe that, folks, you can't have the Holy Spirit. That's why a lot of folks don't have the Holy Spirit. What people are doing, they're deceiving each other. Just cause something sounds good, but there's no power with it. <laughs> there's no truth to it. 
If you don't believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Holy Spirit ain't going to work in you. The first thing, why? Jesus is the one that will give you the Holy Ghost. If you don't work for good year, how you think you're going to get their benefit? Huh? You can work for all Walmart all you want, but you ain't going to receive good year benefits. Well, how you think you're going to receive what Jesus got when you don't believe he's the Christ? God's original son. All right? Any questions before we move on? Nobody can view any question. Everybody understand this. Because the whole people, a lot these folk that are saying they got the Holy Spirit, a lot of them do not. They just don't. They do not. Because the Holy Spirit is going to only do this. Glorify Jesus. Let's go back to St. John again. Let's give it his word for some of you dollars. Chapter 16. He going to glorify Jesus. That's what he's, he's not here to lift the, he's not here to promote us. He's here to promote Jesus. That's why he's here. St. John chapter 16, verse 13. It says, how be it when he, spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, but he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. He will show you things to come, and he shall glorify, for he will, he shall receive of mine, and then he's going to give it to you. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And that's where you met. Okay. Don't you want him to give it to you? Well, how can he give it to you if you don't hear? I don't believe in the Holy Spirit. Well, fine. You won't get nothing from it. Ain't no need for me to listen to you because you won't get nothing from it. Why? Because you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. I don't believe in Jesus. When you say you don't believe in the Holy Spirit, you don't believe in Jesus. All right. So when you believe in the Holy Spirit, as well as believing in Christ, you will find out you got help here. And what it does, that's why you, you a lot of times Peter and John, they were right, said grace and peace be unto you. It causes peace to come. You know why? Because you got somebody here that's going to help you, even though you can't see him with your eyes. But you know, you know, you know, I know the Holy Spirit is going to help me more than I know he, you will help. Why? Because the Lord said he will. He didn't say you will. But he said the Holy Spirit will. So I'm going to put my, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put my trust in what Jesus said. Jesus told me Holy Spirit is going to help me. And he's going to help people. The Holy Spirit will help me more than my mom and dad will. Mom and dad go on, my mama. He, the Holy Spirit will help me more than you. So I believe that the Holy Spirit will help me more than any other human being on the face of the earth. Why? Because the Lord said it. Because Jesus told me. So I know that, so wisdom says to me, you know what? I need to start putting my trust in what Jesus said. I need to start putting my trust in his word. Why? Because if I put my trust in his word, then when you go flaky on me, I won't get word of being all in shape. Why? Because I'm believing what Jesus said. I'm just, when you might not speak to me tomorrow. You might be all over me today, but tomorrow you might, you might not even speak to me. No, I'm going to put my trust in what the Lord said. And the Lord told me the Holy Spirit will help. He sent him here to help believers. So I'm a believer, so I'm believing in you, all right? I'm going to believe in you, talking about Jesus, all right? Any question before we move on? That's why some of you come in here sad, down, depressed. Why? You need, you need to get some deliverance. You really need some deliverance. So now let's go back to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and finish this up and move on. 1 Corinthians 15, talking about Jesus. Because without Jesus, you ain't getting nothing. You, nobody getting nothing. And that's why I, ain't, I don't care what uh, people. Okay. A lot of people. <laughs> man. Christians. Real Christians. You know what they do? They separate them. 
themselves from the world. You know why? Because Jesus told them. Meaning this, I don't think like worldly folk. I'm going to think like the word. I'm going to let this word renew my mind. So that means if you of the world, we can be twin brothers. But if you of the world, and I'm saying we different. We might have born, we might have grew up in the same household, in the same family, but we different. Because I believe I got one master, Jesus, and you got the devil. And you don't have the devil because I say you have the devil. But you have the devil because Jesus said you got the devil. Because according to Ephesians, okay, some of you still have a problem with Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. But it's still real. Every unsaved person is guided by a demonic spirit. I have no problem believing that. I read it. I read it. Before I got saved, I was guided by it. But I'm saved now. That's why, that's why I believe Ephesians 2, chapter 2. Because I'm saved. I am really saved. So I, so I have no problem with that. Some of you, oh, they good and all this. Let me tell you something. The only person good is Jesus in you. If he's in your heart by faith. Other than that, you a rascal just like everybody else. I had to get what you want to get. What have you said? Any, anybody will act good when they want to get what they want to get. Anybody. Any, anybody. Now listen to this now. Listen to this now. Okay. Let's go to verse 14. 1 Corinthians 15, 14. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Now notice, it says, if Christ be not risen. Now we know in St. John chapter 8, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit brought Christ back from the dead. We understand that. And say, if he dwell in us, he will quicken, which means bring our spirit alive to Christ and his word. All right? Now here, it says, and if Christ be not risen, then our preaching then is our preaching vain, and your faith is vain. Now, let me read this the way the world looks at it. And if Muhammad be not risen, then is our preaching vain. And if Buddha be not risen, then is our preaching vain. If the Pope is not risen, then our preaching vain. It absolutely do not say that. It says, if Christ, if nobody but Christ, so that's, so you're telling me, if you're a member, or you call yourself a member of a so-called religious organization that do not believe in Jesus Christ, Jesus the Christ, you're telling me that you're still going to heaven? I don't believe that. I don't care if you 50 million, I don't believe it. Let me tell you what I do believe. All of you going to hell without Jesus. I, well, you judging them, fine. You want to say I'm judging? I'm just saying what the Word said. And the Bible said the Word does the judge. But I believe the Word. So wait a minute. You know, it's amazing how, let me show you something about these liberal colleges, okay, that don't want you to talk about Jesus in the colleges. They want to promote what they want to do. And what they want to do is not for you to talk about it. Well, why can't I do what I want to do and talk about it? Why well, got to be the one that have the pain? Now, you get mad at me because I talk about Jesus. But then you talk about everybody in space. And you want me to listen to you. Folks, that's what the devil does. The devil is an unfair person. He just simply, un he ain't right. And that's why when you walk with him, you ain't right. So if you don't believe in Jesus, it's impossible for you to go to heaven. Your faith is vain. If you don't believe Jesus the Christ, folks, Holy Spirit can't work with you. You got to believe this. You got, you got to tell yourself, you know what? I know the United
United States. I know the world wants everybody to work together, but according to the gospel, I can't. I can't compromise. I can't believe what you believe. I can't tell you when you that you're going to heaven when you don't believe in Jesus. I cannot tell you that you're going to heaven when you don't believe that Jesus is the only one. There is no other name. Hebrews, excuse me, Acts 4.12, thank you. There is no other name under heaven where men might be saved other than. Now, I don't care what comes out of Washington or what comes out of your house. There's only one person that can save, and he's not God the Father. He's Jesus the Christ. If you don't believe that, the Holy Spirit ain't working in you. Because he was sent for one reason, and that is to glorify. Any question before we move on? That's why you got a whole bunch of people claiming to be saved with no power. And the devil tearing them up. I mean, the de with sickness and disease, the devil wearing them out with fear. Unbelief, messing them up. And let me tell you what you can't do. You cannot get along with the devil in Christ too. You're going to have to make a choice. The Holy Spirit ain't going to make you, but you're going to have to make a choice. Now let's move on so we move on to something else. It says this. It says, now, verse 15, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God. Now, wait a minute. I will be a false witness if I'm telling you that Jesus rose from the grave and he got all power and he's the only Savior if he didn't. If he did not raise, if that did not happen, I would be a, a false prophet. Why? Because I'll be telling you a lie. But it did happen. It did. And when you were a Christian, you believed that with your whole entire heart. All right? Now this one, it said this. It said, Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, and he did, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then Christ didn't rise. And if Christ be not risen, your faith is vain, and your you are yet in your. So wait a minute. If you still carrying your sins, that means you're going to heaven. If you still carrying your sin, that means you're going to heaven. Well, why do people think that? Why do people think if I'm still carrying my sins, I'm going to heaven? They every day. No, if you still carrying your sins, you gonna pay for them, and your payment is hell. Jesus came to deliver you from that. He came to stop you from going to hell, but he ain't begging you. He give you a choice. If you want to follow him, that's why he said in St. John 8, 51, if you just keep what I say, if you keep what I say, you will never see death. Lake of fire. All you got to do is follow my word. All you got to do is stop following everybody else and follow Lord, teach me, show me, help me to understand your word. So I will not go to hell, but I go to heaven like I'm supposed to. Then in verse, then they also, which are fallen asleep in Christ, they are perished. Every one of them is dead. Every one of them is dead. So in order for the Holy Spirit to work in an individual, uh, the individual has to be completely converted persuaded. Not just convinced. Convinced on the borderline. But fully persuaded that Jesus is the Christ. And that he's able to keep it. You know, I don't care what who, what new doctrine come up. I ain't leaving that one. I don't care what kind of words you say you got. If an angel gave you something different, I ain't following you. I'm going to stay in this word. I don't Young folks, I don't care what college you go to. If you stay in Jesus, you're going to heaven. 
But if you get out of Jesus, you are absolutely going to hell. There's only one Savior, and it ain't your mom and dad. It ain't the preacher. It's Jesus. It's no, and you have to, okay, for the Holy Spirit to work in you, that's the first test. You got to be, you got to believe Jesus is Christ. Or he ain't working in you. The devil will work in you, but the Holy Spirit won't. You got to be, uh, you got to be so lie and understand who bought you with a price, Jesus. It wasn't this government. So I'm not obligated to get along with no other or religion or a cult or any organization or individual that believe in something different. And you can call me a devil all you want. Fine, they call Jesus a devil. But the thing about it, Jesus went to heaven and the devil got kicked out. You got to be so loud in this word to be able to allow the Holy Spirit to work inside of you. Because he, remember why he's coming here. To promote Jesus. Nobody else, no denomination, nobody else's parade, but to promote, that's why. Nobody but Jesus. He, he's not here to promote your cause or mine. He's here to do one thing to help empower us to promote. So you have to make a decision. Do I want to be, as the world said, one-minded? Or do I want to be multi-minded? <laughs> I think one mind is enough. As long as that mind is in Christ Jesus, I'm satisfied with it. I don't care how many people say whatever, I'm satisfied with that. Now, now let's move on now. Now, to be able to understand that, now let's go in 1 Corinthians again. Now, verse 10. Okay. Now listen to this. We read verse 9 too. For I am the least of the apostles that are not meant to be called an apostle because I, what? Persecuted the church. This is Apostle Paul. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not what? Not what? In what? Not in vain. Now listen to what it says. It says, But I labored more abundantly than they all. But not I, but the grace of God which was, now wait a minute, Apostle Paul, now there's a few things in this scripture that the Bible's telling us. Number one, you can labor in vain. Number one, you can labor in vain. Because if you could, Paul wouldn't have said, I'm not laboring in vain. So on the flip side, you can labor in vain. In other words, you can go to church, you can sing on the choir, you can pray, you can do all this stuff and still die and go to hell. You know why? You didn't do it right. You didn't do it right. Back to Matthew chapter 15, Jesus said this. He said, you know what? There are people that honor me with their lips, but their heart is... And then he said, <clears throat> in vain, they do worship me. Now, wait a minute. They worship him. They do. They, they sing some. They, they pray and all this kind of stuff. But he said, it's useless. Why? Because they are not doing it right. So Apostle Paul says this. He says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. But I labor more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God. which So he's saying, the reason why I'm telling the truth, the reason why I'm preaching Jesus, the reason why I'm doing it right, the reason why I'm standing against persecution and false doctrine is because grace in me. He said, wait, it's not me on my own. It's the motive, it's the power inside of me. The reason why I say that if you don't trust in Jesus with your heart, you're going to hell, because the grace in me. The reason why I say God so loved the world that he sent Jesus 
and yet God is not saving, Jesus is, because I want you to know the truth. Why? Because the grace in me. The reason why I tell you, don't listen to these false preachers or anybody that will lie or pervert the gospel, because the grace in me. He said, the reason why I'm preaching is because the grace in me. So he's telling me that if grace in you, you're going to do something. And what you're going to do is going to do it right. You're going to do it line upon line by the word. You're going to do it exact. You ain't going to let religion cause you to go to hell. You're going to do it just like the word said. You ain't going to let. The reason why I don't let nobody see me because the grace inside of me. The grace inside of me don't believe everybody, but believe the gospel. The reason why I stand, having done all the stand, is because of the grace in me. The reason why I come down here every week and work it's because of the grace in me. It's not my, it's I'm being motivated by his power. And his power is grace. Now wait a minute. Now wait a minute. Paul's saying, it's grace that's causing me to work. Wait a minute. My car is not running off of air. It's running off of fuel. So grace is my fuel. Now wait a minute here. If grace is motivating where do you think grace come from? Let's go back to St. John chapter 1. Let's go back to St. John chapter 1. Now, wait a minute. But I thought you can believe in anybody and go to heaven. I thought you can believe whatever the world say and go to heaven. I just thought that as long as you believe what everybody else say, you're all right. Let me tell you, when you become a Christian, you come to a place you want. You won't believe what nobody said. You won't believe nobody that lied. <laughs> In St. John chapter 1, listen to this. Talking about grace now, because grace, boy, Lord Jesus. St. John chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 6, verse 17 says this. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came Okay, stop right there. No more confusion now. We know how grace came. In order for us to receive something, it has to come. In order for you to get your mail, the postman has to bring it. Okay, you can't go to public to the meat section and get your mail. It has to be the right one. The post person has to bring it in order for you to get your mail. Well, in order for you to get grace, you got to go to Jesus. Wait, wait a minute. You got to go. You can't go to Moses or Abraham. You, wait a minute. You cannot even go to God. God gave his grace to Jesus. <laughs> Why are you? Either that or the scripture line. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Listen now, what it said. It said, for the, law, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold, hold. Let me tell you what it said. As great as Moses was, Moses had to be given something. It said, for the law. <laughs> God gave Moses the law. When Jesus rose up and said, all power is in my hand, who you think came up with the New Testament? Jesus came up with his own doctrine. Moses delivered God's doctrine. Jesus came up with his own. That's why the law can't save you. Only the... Why you put St. John 8.51 back up there again? Why you think... Listen to what he St. John 8.51. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep... But people, he's trying to tell you when Jesus conquered the devil, Jesus the Christ, God gave everything to him for this season. Everything. Why do you think he said all, of, 
all power. Let me tell you something. You ain't going to go to God and God going to speak against Jesus. Matter of fact, you ain't going to get to God unless you go through. He kept telling you I'm the way. The religious folk, can't, they don't like that. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. They don't like that. So the law was given to Moses, but grace, it said it came because of Jesus. And oh, Jesus issued grace. Jesus. Lord Jesus. I hope y'all can understand this. If y'all want to, listen, the Lord, everybody do not have the Holy Spirit and everybody is not getting the Holy Spirit. Why? Because they don't believe Jesus. And ain't no way in the world. I don't care what so you can, what song you come up with, what poem or whatever. If you don't believe in Jesus, the Holy Spirit didn't use you. How you know? I just read Acts 5.32. Holy Spirit is sent, given to those that obey. Obey. Oh, Beyonce ain't under the Holy Ghost. Neither J.C. They're not guided by the Holy Ghost. Whoo, Jesus, Jesus is. Any question before we move on? Go ahead. Apostle, when you're saying, um, when Paul said you can labor in vain, is that why the Jehovah Witness, the cult, they, they labor, they zealous and laboring in believing that their doings is going to bring them to salvation? Yeah, they their words. They ain't going to nothing. They doing it in vain. They, you, people, they are folks singing. Beautiful voices. But they ain't going to heaven. They are folks praying. But they ain't going to heaven. They are folks that's paying tithes or do. They ain't going to heaven. Well, not tithes ain't do. Tithes is tithes. But they ain't going to heaven. The only way you and I are going to get to heaven is through Jesus. That's it. And when you become a Christian, you come to a place of understanding that he bought you. He bought, he purchased you. He purchased you. That means he got the right to tell you what to do. And all throughout the New Testament, he tells you what to do. He don't make you do it, but he tells you what to do. You can get puffed up and full of pride. He going to still tell you what to do, but he will not make you do it. Holy Spirit won't make you do nothing. He'll show you the way, and you decide. See, the devil will try to make you do stuff. Jesus will show you the right way, and the Holy Spirit said, I will empower you to do it, but it's based on your decision. And when I hear folks say the Holy Spirit made me do it, they lie. The Holy Spirit didn't make you do nothing. Now, one thing, go go to 1 Corinthians before we close tonight. Let's see here. Boy, this is just good. Hmm. 1 Corinthians. Lord Jesus. And that's why people really need to get into this gospel. They really need to get into the word so they can see, to make sure that what they're receiving is the truth. Because whatever you receive, that's what you're going to believe. <laughs> whatever you receive, that's what you're going to believe. And when you believe in false doctrine, when you believe this stuff, you're going to find out after a while, it don't work with you. All right, now, let's see. 1 Corinthians, let's see. Go to chapter 14. It says this. Everybody got it? Verse 31 says, For you may all prophesy one by one, that all may learn 
and all may be confident. So we ain't teaching on prophecy tonight. Verse 32 is where we want to get to. And the spirit of the prophets are what? Let me explain what that means. A lot of times I heard when I first got saved, I used to go to different meetings, and I hear people just get up and just start prophesying while uh, the man or woman of God or ministry, he was out of order. And they would say, the devil made me do it. And excuse me, the Holy Spirit made me do it. That ain't true. That scripture there, when it says, and the spirit of the prophets are subject to the prophets, means this, that the Holy Spirit will give you a word. But if the preacher of preaching, he'll have you to hold it to appropriate time. In other words, he don't make you do nothing. He don't make you do one thing. That's the old Pentecostal way. Just jump up, and you got one person prophesying on that side, another one on that side, that same. That, that's out of order. That's out of order. The Holy Spirit, do, he, he don't do that. He do not do that. He does things decent and in order. And that's why the scripture went on to say, let all things be done decent and in order. All right? So any questions before we move on? All right. Now, now, about grace. Now, when you understand, folks, there's no grace, there's no salvation. There's no Jesus, there's no grace. We just read grace was given. Moses didn't give you grace. Grace came by Jesus. Okay, we can't even go further if you can't understand this. If you can't understand that in order for the Holy Spirit even to begin to work in you from your heart, you have to really align yourself with Jesus. He ain't going to align with you. You have to align with him. Well, how do I do that? You must be born again. Not go to church, but become the church. Become a part of the body, of the real body. And then Jesus, Jesus, because he is the son of God, he become your God. And let me tell you something. You, well, what about God the Father? Go to Philippians before we close. Go to Philippians. Jesus, Jesus. You got to understand this. You got to understand. Now listen to this. Philippians chapter 2. Okay. The Pharisees have a problem with this. Everybody got it? Let's see. Let's start with verse. Verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in who? <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't understand why the scripture says sometimes Christ Jesus and sometimes Jesus the Christ. You know why? The Holy Spirit, when it talks about Jesus the Christ, it's talking about the man. When it's talking about Christ Jesus, it's talking about the anointed one in the man. Both of them the same, but what, what it is is this. Christ was all God. Not God the Father, the Son of God. And Jesus was all man. Nobody like it. Let me say it again. Christ was all God, the Spirit of God, in the man. Adam had his own spirit. Can you understand that? Jesus had who, who was the son of God in him. That's what the Pharisees had a problem with. You know why? Listen to this. 
Jesus said, Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be what? And he was. Wait a minute now. If a father got a son, they got the same bloodline. That's why they have the same last name. Listen. Who being in the form of God, thought it not Robert to be equal to God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of a man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also highly exalted him and given him a name above every name. Because every knee going to bow to him. Now Jesus thought himself to be equal with God. And God thought like this. You ain't robbing me, son. You ain't taking nothing away from me, son. Because you are. Because you my son. Because you my son. Because you got my last name. God. Son of <laughs> Man, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. He was all God and all man. And God didn't think, God the Father didn't think he was taking anything from him. Wait a minute, I thought God said I'm a jealous God. He is. But he has a son. You know, let me tell you something. Relationship between a father and a son. If a father is in the right place, he loves to see his son succeed and go further than him. He get joy out of his son. Well, what you think God the Father did? He got joy out of his son. And you ain't going to take that joy away from the father. So he don't care whether you believe in his son or not. He wants you to believe in him. But notice what he did. It says, wherefore God also, the father highly, he didn't hold back the son. He lifted him because he loved and his son loved. <laughs> Lord Jesus. Whoa, God, we're going to have to stop tonight. Every knee should bow. And they're going to confess that Jesus is, or you know what? That Jesus is God. But he's the son. If you don't believe that, Holy Spirit ain't working. And you, whatever you're doing, is you on your own. Because the Holy Spirit will not work in nobody that do not glorify Jesus. Any question before we close tonight? Yes, go ahead. Okay, Apostle. You said the Holy Spirit will empower us to promote Jesus. Oh, yeah, that's what most definitely. The Word says that. Yes, sir. Okay. Is that only by his word or is that also by our testimony what kind of testimony you got like if you for instance um, have asked the Lord to show you a witty invention for example and in doing so it will give him glory okay and who showed it to you <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
Yes, sir. All right. Any other question? Any other, that, you know, that's, when you're a Christian, you always give glory back because you know who did it. When you're religious, it, you like Nebuchadnezzar. Look what I did. But when you're a real Christian, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I don't care if you buy a pair of shoes on sale. I thank you, Jesus, for blessing me. Everybody else played, paid the original price, and Lord, you caused me to go a day when I got them at half price. And then when I went to the cash register, it was another 25% off. Because it's on a Tuesday. Man. But, oh, oh. but you know what, though? The average religious person will go and give that and won't give glory to him, won't say nothing. they just as unthankful un as they are unholy. Just as unthankful as they are unholy. They won't give him no credit. You know what? They don't hardly get nothing. You know why? Because they don't know how to glorify him. They do not know how to glorify Jesus. And see the whole. Remember now, what the Holy Spirit gonna do? He's gonna glorify Jesus. So if you don't want to glorify Him, He ain't gonna make you. But He ain't gonna use you either. And you'll be struggling, and you won't have that joy and peace. Why? Because you are not following the word of the Lord. Any other question before we close? Yes, go ahead. It's a blessing, folks, to understand by the Holy Spirit. Apostle, last week we talked about um, he that believeth and is baptized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have the book, the baptismal book, and I have people, you know, that came up for salvation, and they still haven't been baptized because he said I had to work, and it was like last year. Well, they had to work every time we got baptized. They never came back again to say anything about it. Well, if they ain't never came back, they they here. Uh, yes, a lot of, some people are in and out, but there are people that are here still. And they need to be baptized. Well, we need to baptize them. Okay. Yeah, find out when they're not working so we can schedule. Okay. Uh, to baptize them. Yes. Sir. Okay, that's what we do, all right. Tell them we got hot water. <laughs> if they need it, all right. I'll be shivering or whatever. Thank the Lord for that. Any other question before we close? How many of you understood the teaching tonight? Yeah. If you don't understand, let me tell you this. Okay, the old way, that's why you hear a lot of people, all they talk about is God, 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 God. Uh-uh. God said you talk about Jesus. And that ain't taking nothing away from God the Father. If Okay, if, if, I, if I told my son to tell you something, and he tell you something, and you do because he told you, it's because I approved of it. Well, God approved of his son, Jesus. It's the reason why people do that, because, see, the world are talk about God, but notice, they won't, when you start talking about Jesus, people get fired up. You know why? Because Jesus, Jesus narrows everything down. You know why? Because the gospel of Jesus Christ tells Christians that there's no other Savior. Matter of fact, there's no other book that you should read. And matter of fact, they're from heaven but that one. And other folks don't like it. The Mormons don't like it. The Buddhists don't like it. The Hindus don't like it. The five percenters don't like it. Why? The Muslims don't like it. Why? Because the Bible said that's the only book. How can two walk together unless they be agreed? Amos said, you can't. So, well, as Christians, we have to take a stand. And whenever I see a Christian that changed like a lizard, the Holy Spirit don't. You know, when you like, oh, oh, I believe in this doctrine. I believe in that. I believe we're all going to heaven. I don't. I don't. I know everybody ain't going to heaven. I know for a fact. Why? I'm reading the facts. I'm re the only way you can get me to believe you, I'm going to have to watch you. Hang on.
on the cross. Die and get back up again. And to make sure you qualify, you had to have done it before Jesus. That means if you die and come back up again, you still I ain't saying gonna believe you why. Because Jesus done did it. So it, it is impossible for you to get me to believe in any other doctrine. This is the real one. This is the real word. This is the truth. And if you if you all, let me tell you, if okay, if you psalmists, physicians, and dancers. If you really hook up with the Holy Spirit like he wants you to, she, you're going to find out next week some of the things going to happen through you. You're going to find out. When I said hook up with him, there are some things that we haven't seen yet. It has not even appeared to us. Because the Holy Spirit got it all. And Jesus gave it to him to give to us. And all we, all we, he going to give it to us. We got to glorify Jesus. Not him. We got to glorify Jesus. We got to glorify I'll say Any other question before we... Do anybody have any question about anything tonight? Or if not, we're going to let y'all go home. Go ahead. Say what now? Go ahead. We have one from Joan, New Jersey. Preach the word. We all need it. We